These first thing, uh, little snippets, are black and white from the original film. And the first one is called uh, Andrew Brett at Shoal Bay. Yes, because I believe the people have seen their mistake. They not become organized and to have unity. They've seen their mistakes in that respect. This is why. I think this is why that we had lots of the things that we're lacking about for what I have. We've been contrary one to another. We've had a job to get two people to agree on the one particular thing. I want it here, and I want it there. We won't give it to you at all. It's like one candy that you got for two children. There's two children, you got one candy. They both can't have it. And as I said, it's by mistakes we learn. That is why we've got no organization here on Fort Boyle. We had a union. That's still in existence, I suppose. But there's only a handful of members. But it's going, that's going to get reorganized. I have a feeling we will be reorganized. Some of our cooperative movements has perished in our midst. Some there was no help for. Some there was. But all these things that we saw perish, by right them things we've learned, as it comes back again, never gets organized again, I think we'll hold on, hold fast. This time. That's my opinion, sir. But we ain't got to be afraid of them things anymore. What we know, we got to let people know that we know it. And get him out and do something. By that, they don't know what we can do. And if we just sit back and say, well, I can't get into that because I'm not afraid, well, I won't get nowhere anyway. Well, then we're not going to get anywhere. But let's let people know what we are capable of doing and what we know. Otherwise, we'll never be known. Well, to me, that, that's pure poetry and very powerful. And when people looked at that, too, they, they said, God, yes, you know, that, that's right, we've got to do something. And um, this was part of a meeting of fishermen at Shoal Bay, four or five, and it went on for about 10 or 12 minutes, but that was the, the highlight of that meeting. And you can see that here's a man who had no formal education, who was functionally illiterate, but tremendously articulate, and said, hey, we can do it. The next uh, snippet is uh, William Wells uh, from Fogo talking about his view of the island. This was a man who had actually worked up in Ontario for a while and returned uh, back to his home. And he gives uh, an interesting perspective on his view of poverty in Fogo as opposed to, say, a place like Montreal. Well, uh, to me, to me, Fogo Island is the gym of Notre Dame Bay. Now, that's how I got Fogo Island. But now I might be the only one on there who would say that. Yeah. See? But uh, I can't see what there is off the island anymore. I know, yes, there's big industries and there's everything else up on the mainland. But they all, you know, what well, I mean, we don't can't compare ourselves to them people because we're chiefly fishermen. And we don't do very, our earning powers is not so great because they're, and even so, in Montreal and in Toronto, they got poor people. Well, there's so many, there's poor people up there. And you let a guy go away from here. Go to Toronto to work. He gets a good job. My boy, he's laid off for a week or so. Like Christmas. Probably no pay. What's he doing? He got a car of rats. He got to keep that thing going with gas. And then he got his taxes, his federal, provincial, and income tax, and all the rest of it. 
So it dwindles down. He wants to have pretty good pay to meet all the obligations, as it were. That's the way it is. Whereas here on Fort Walden, we don't know too much about that. You've been away yourself, haven't you? Oh, yes. Ten or twelve years ago, I was up, up in Ontario, up in, in Preston, Ontario, and Hesper. I worked with the Dominion Mullins in Hesper for five, six months there. I like it all right, like that, you know, but I could never say, yes, this is my class. No, I served it back where I could see the roll, or rolling by the seashore. <laughs> Well, there's a delightful person, obviously, and uh, who loved what he was doing. He went on in that tape to talk a bit sadly about his sons, because uh, he had four or five sons working in the boat with him, and, and he lost all but one of them to uh, who, when one went into the RCMP and another moved to the mainland, and he talked about the, how the times were changing, and a lot of the young people didn't want to stay in the, in the fishery. But this is an example, too, of the technique of the, the filmmaking process because um, the interviewer plays a very low-key role and doesn't keep hammering questions at a person, lets them just go on and weave a story of their own making and without reverting back to some pre-decided questions that were going to be asked. And I think that was the strength of the Fogel films in that it allowed people to, un in, a, in, in the comfort of their own environment, to unfold their own lives. The next video is part of a 28-minute film called The Past, the Present, and the Future with Olga Spence from uh, port au -Choix. The If you ever have a chance, you should see the whole video because it's a marvelous video. And she, her language is poetry, and she's eloquent. And this is just one segment, short segment, to give you an illustration of, of her views of the, of the area and some of the problems of the area. But the full 28 minutes was more balanced in that she talked about the early days as a postmistress with the mail being delivered by ox cart and the loss of her son in an, in a, in an accident in one of the local ice boats and uh, the problems of uh, the political representatives never coming around and this kind of thing. And whenever we showed this back in those days, usually people would stand up and clap at the end of it because it was so eloquent. And this was, of course, is the strength of much of rural Newfoundland and Labrador is that eloquence is, is there. Uh, yet people who live in the security of their central Canadian perspective don't realize that out there in the hinterland there are wonderful, exciting people with ideas of their own, and this is true anywhere in the world. Uh, from Bombay to St. Anthony. It's a distance of 250 miles. We have no doctor. We have no ambulance even. And we haven't even got a stretcher. Or they should make one of the gilmet with two sticks. And for our nursing station, we can't expect a nurse to look at you and tell you what's wrong with you. Can we? Well, it's the only thing they say. You've got to go to St. Anthony. Now, St. Anthony from Port only has a dirt road. In fact, from Bombay, it's only a dirt road and a very rough one. And there have been times that they've gone to St. Anthony and have to be towed over the, over the washouts in the road, but by trucks. Now, you take a sick person and take them, or even an accident, from here to St. Anthony. If they're very bad, they did when they get there, because they'll die from the bumps. They're jumping around in a car or whatever they may have. But if an accident happens, where first thing, where are we going to go to get a car? Whose car are we going to get? Now it's a bad road to put a car that man paid probably three thousand dollars over a dirt road. That's St. Anthony. So we have no doctor, which we should have a hospital. 
somewhere between Bombay and St. Anthony. But there's no doubt, if you live to get to St. Anthony, you get the best of treatment when you get there. You don't get a black look from nobody. I was there myself. You get the best of treatment, and you get the best of food. And for the nurses and the aides, they're beautiful. As to the way you're treated. Couldn't be treated better than this world. But it's a journey that you've got to take. You can't get to St. Anthony less than five hours. Now it's St. Anthony or Bonnie. And you've got a very rough road to face. Now that's another thing. At a distance of 250 miles, we got on the coast about 20 beer taverns. But we got no doctor. Now the beer taverns, you know, as far as I can understand, has got something to do with the government too. The government got something to do with that. Well, if they could put 20 beer taverns, surely they can give us one doctor and one hospital. No, the district of St. Barbs is forgotten and the people are laying low and sinking small. People are laying low and sinking small. 